Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman. Oh, yes, Senator Ward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sir, thank you very much for your testimony. I wanted to get a little bit of an understanding. You indicated that Oregon is the most seizures in Idaho are occurring from Oregon, originating from Oregon. And I'm wondering whether or not that's associated with uh, legal, uh, legal substance in Oregon coming over the border into Idaho um, from individuals rather than some, you know, large, uh, you know, pounds of marijuana being seized because somebody's looking for to, to, to package and sell here. Go ahead, Mr. Chairman. Senator, we run into both of those uh, both of those situations. We run into situations where um, citizens from Oregon are bringing over medical marijuana to sell, and we also run into situations where citizens from Oregon are bringing over non-medical marijuana to sell. And Mr. Chairman, may I follow up, please? Go ahead. Thank you, and thank you, sir. Uh, is and I'm sorry, I just don't know. In Oregon, is there a limit on the amount of marijuana that can be purchased under? Uh, a prescription. So I, you said that people are bringing it over uh, medical marijuana from Oregon to sell here. Are they bringing over large quantities or just small quantities? Individually, I mean. Mr. Chairman, Senator, uh, both quantities. Um, I don't know the legal amount Oregon citizens can can uh, um, obtain under medical marijuana, but I can get that information. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, David McCluskey, 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 and uh, Gary DeBoard after that. Doctor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm uh, David McCluskey. I'm a physician in Twin Falls. Um, I uh, work with the youth there. I uh, am president and chairman of the free clinic there. I work the emergency room at, at Wood River, Jerome, and Twin Falls. And I've been practicing since 1982. So I come before you to give you the medical side of, of what I see with, with the use of, uh, of marijuana. I first want to say that, you know, we talk about situational science, and that seems to be what this issue is about. And to me, situational science is reporting both sides of the scientific argument as if they have legitimacy, not just the side that has the facts behind it. And I think if you want to know what the facts are as far as a medical standpoint, there's no legitimacy for legalizing marijuana because it is very harmful from a medical standpoint. It, uh, if you want to see where it stands with all the other, it is an addictive drug along with uh, nicotine, alcohol, cocaine, heroin, and meth. Uh, it also uh, will be another gateway drug for our youth like tobacco and alcohol are now. Most of my patients that I see in the emergency room and in the free clinic, which I see about two or three a week, that are on um, marijuana and are on meth, they started on marijuana before they went to meth. One of the things that I think is important for you to know is that uh, tobacco is the leading cause of death and disease in this country. And you inhale tobacco just like you do meth. You just can't smoke two packs of, of marijuana a day and and stay on your feet like you can cigarettes but the but the harm is still there and what they do is it stimulates the brain to produce dopamine and dopamine is sort of like what I call the happy hormone and this is where all of the these addictive drugs the amount of dopamine that's released first of all carbohydrates release about 20 times the amount of dopamine you need so that's why we are too fat because we're always eating because it sounds good and it's a happy drug marijuana increases it by 175% in the, in, the, in the brain. Alcohol is 200%. Tobacco and nicotine is 225%. Cocaine, 400%. And meth, 1,000%. So marijuana is not a non-addictive drug. It is not something that's safe and healthy. And one of the things that I just hate to see is that we become too politically correct in the laws that we pass. And many of the laws that you have passed that are politically correct cause death and harm to my patients from a health care standpoint. And if we allow marijuana to be legalized, that's another politically correct law that's going to cause death and harm to my patients. And I hate to see that. And I do use it on my cancer patients, but I use it as a pill, and it works very well. And they agree that it does. So it isn't that I think there's no use for it, but there is a proper use for it, just like there's a proper use for all the drugs that I do use. 
Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Any questions for the doctor? Mr. Chairman. Senator Sidaway. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and thank you for your testimony. Um, I heard one of the uh, earlier testimonies here today that said that, uh, that people that were using uh, the drug were more aggressive. And I, I, uh, I know different drugs affect people differently. And I was just wondering, in, in your professional opinion, uh, people that are using uh, marijuana, whether recreational or for medicinal purposes or whatever, do you find that they're more aggressive uh, when they're under the, the effects of, of that drug or less, or, or are different users reacting differently to the drug? Uh, Mr. Chairman and Senator Sipp, uh, I find that it depends on the person. But I, but I think the point, the great point I want to make is I do discuss with my patients, particularly those in the, in the free clinic and the emergency room that use marijuana, how it affects them. And each one of the questions I ask them always is, if I'm going to do surgery on you, do you want me to do surgery on you after I've smoked a marijuana cigarette? And to the person, they've said no. So that tells me there's something that they know about it or they feel about it that makes them not at the top or the peak of what they can do. And I think that's the thing. It, it certainly doesn't have some of the effects that some of these others do, but you're not at the peak and, uh, and how it affects your brain makes it so that uh, you, know, you, you can't carry out things the way you should. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Other questions? Well, thank you very much. Thank you. We've got uh, Gary DeBoard and then is, is Debbie Fields here? I don't know if she was able to make it. She signed up. So uh, then it'll be Ron Harriman. Oh. Hi, <laughs> um, I'm Gary DeBoard. I am a terminally ill patient. I will die um, quicker than I will, <laughs> um, than I would normally. I had my neck replaced three years ago. Um, I have a permanent nerve damage that causes me to be on fire. I lock up and I go paralyzed from my neck down. Um, when this happens, I cannot, I, I can't move anything. The only thing that works is my eyes. They have, um, that I'm aware of, for the nerve damage that I have, that I have, there are three different medications available for it. One is Lyrica. Um, the other is a Neurontin, which are both anti-seizure medicines. And the third is medical marijuana that the federal government has put a patent on for my disease. They have patented it in 2010 for um, neuroprotectants. It is one of the only things that works. Yes, I can take a heavy duty amount of pain pills, but I can die from those pain pills too. They will eventually kill me. They will shut my body down. Um, every 19 minutes, someone in the United States dies from a pain pill. For marijuana, there are no deaths. Never in your emergency rooms are you going to see someone in there because they've overdosed from marijuana. Um, I guess that's it. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you very much. Are there questions from the committee members? All right. Well, thank you for being here. Uh, then Ron Harriman and uh, Lindsay Reinhardt. Mr. Chairman, Senators, been a lot of good information this morning. I brought enough information probably to talk to you for the next couple of weeks. But they've covered quite a bit of that, so I'll just go on to a couple of points here that I think has been missing so far. Reports from around the world show that marijuana use in youth produces an IQ loss of approximately eight points and causes permanent neurological changes part of which promotes schizophrenia, not effective psychosis, major depression, and mania with psychotic features and hallucinations. Use of this drug not only permanently impairs the mind of youth, but endangers the safety of anyone in contact with the user. Statistically, 12% of long-haul truck drivers' accidents 
have shown that marijuana use contributed to the incident. In a study published by the journal, journal BMJ, the study also showed that drivers who tested positive for marijuana were more likely, more than three times likely, more likely to be responsible for fatal car crashes. Researchers say that likelihood of being at fault in a ac fatal accident increases as the blood concentration of marijuana increases. It also endangers the workplace. The health damage from a single pack of cigarettes in the United States is $35. If you legalize marijuana in the United States, statistically 16% of the population would use it regularly. Four joints a day would equal a pack of cigarettes. CDC estimates that 4.5 4.53 million people, or 19.3% of the adults aged 18 years or older in the United States, smoke cigarettes. One cigarette, cigarette smoking is more common among men, 21.5%, and women, 17.3%. Cigarette smoking is the leading cause of preventable death in the United States, according to approximately, accounting for approximately 443,000 deaths or one in every five deaths in the United States each year. At the present date, the cost of tobacco use and the health, health alone exceeds $200 billion. The use of marijuana in health alone will match that medical cost of tobacco. While I sympathize with those individuals who suffer from loss of appetite when dealing with the treatment for cancer, the ADA and the CDC have prescribed a, a pill entitled Marinol which can be obtained legally with prescription that is used to deal with the loss of appetite. Don't weaken Idaho further. Strengthen Idaho. Pass this issue. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. We've got uh, Lindsay Reinhart and then uh, Holly Cool. Mr. Chairman, committee, thank you for hearing this today. We greatly appreciate it. Um, I, I don't want to um, see SCR 112 move forward in our state. I am with Compassionate Idaho. Um, my name is Lindsay Reinhart. Our organization seeks to legalize medical marijuana for qualified patients outlined in our new petition. We seek to protect them from arrest, prosecution, and forfeiture. <laughs> to permanently ban marijuana in our state would have a significant impact to everyone, but especially patients and their loved ones. Compassion is not political, nor should it be. This isn't a partisan issue. To permanently ban marijuana in all firms will make me, will make me and other families move out of the state. We will not have no choice. Um, having medical marijuana program in place will have a positive financial impact for our state. We already have people living in our neighboring states that want to come home. We don't want to have to have more move away. These patients are referred to as Idaho refugees in other states. They have to treat their illness and their families go with them, so do their jobs. Sick and dying people shouldn't have to leave the state, nor should their families, to be considered a criminal for using a medication they need. We frequently hear that pharmaceuticals are available to treat all of these illnesses. They aren't as effective and have too many side effects. The most controversial is called Marinol. You guys have heard a little bit about that today. Um, it, is, it is a synthetic THC. Cancer patients are receiving this drug at a cost between $400 and $2,400 a month to treat nausea and stimulate appetite. THC is one cannabinoid in this plant. The plant in its entirety is much more affordable and patients receive more benefits. Not all patients need THC though. We need other compounds. This drug is ineffective in most cases with the exception to cancer and the cost is outrageous. Current studies show that cancer patients need more than just THC. I need more than just THC. I have multiple sclerosis. I need a non-psychoactive component called CBD, another one called CBN, and another one called CBH. These chemicals are not toxic. Dr. Tashkin worked for our federal government for 25 years on a hypothesis that causing smoking marijuana would cause cancer. He later had to come out in 2003 against his own hypothesis after 25 years of research for our government that it did not cause cancer. 
He was the person that said that five cigarettes a day equaled, or five cigarettes equaled one joint. He had to go back on that hypothesis because it was not true. Our government owns the patent on the part of this plant that I need. It's a federal patent. Um, I was diagnosed with MS at a young age. In short, my immune system attacks me. I'm 30. My health has declined. I have a record of two parking tickets. My disease is progressing fast. I grew up here. I love Idaho. My family is here. I don't want to move away. People tell me to leave all the time, but I love Idaho. I love the compassion that our, that our state has, and I would really appreciate if we could exercise it. Marijuana side effects cause short-term memory loss, dry mouth, red eyes, increased appetite, euphoria, drowsiness, opioid pain pills, nausea, vomiting, severe constipation, rebound headaches, mood swings, dry mouth, severe memory loss, impaired speech, increased appetite, decreased appetite, depression, mental and body high, high addiction rates, decreased liver and kidney function, over 37,000 deaths in 2010 nationwide, and that's just some of them. Thank you for time, your time, and thank you for hearing both sides of this argument. I am standing here for any questions, please. Thank you very much. Other questions? Chairman? Yes, Senator Hill. Mr. Chairman, uh, Ms. Beinhart? Yes. Uh, I thought you said at the beginning, our organization, and then you went on there. Do, are you representing an organization? Yes, I am with Compassionate Idaho. I am the director of Compassionate Idaho. We get our petition back from the AG today with recommendations. Okay, thank so you very we'll much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Other questions? Great, thank you. Thank you.